Hey everybody and welcome back to the Introductory Astronomy Lab. This week we're going to be going over some stellar phenomena um, and we're going to be analyzing how quickly they, uh, they rotate around the Sun. So first up let's go over what the Sun is. So basically the Sun is a giant ball of plasma. It's not the best circle but it's close enough in space. Basically what it consists of is hydrogen and helium and the immense pressure from the gravity of all that gas forces the hydrogen to fuse into helium and that reaction gives off the energy and the light that we use here on Earth. Now a couple of concepts before we get into actually how to do the lab. Uh, the first is differential rotation. So since the Sun is not one solid body or solid object, different lines of latitude on the Sun are going to have different rates of rotation. So up at the poles, you're going to have an average rate of rotation of about 26 days for one point to go all the way around. And at the equator, it's going to be about 36 days to go around. Yes. All right, so we're going to be looking at that differential rotation in our lab. Now, there's a couple of solar features that you should be aware of uh, before we do the lab. You're going to notice when you go to the suntoday.org, that's the website we're going to be using, that the surface of the sun is going to look granular, or it's going to kind of, kind of look like a bunch of different kind of cells almost on the surface of the sun. These are actually kind of convection pockets where you'll have a bright center with the hot plasma going up, or hot gases, and then the cool gases going down. And the cool gases kind of give that darkened ridge along the cells, and the, uh, the hot plasma going up gives that bright center right there. Some other features that we're going to look for are, let's draw our sun, our sunspots and solar prominences. All right. So basically a sunspot on the surface of the sun kind of looks like a black dot, more or less, maybe with some filaments. Now the reason why a sunspot looks like a black dot basically is that there's intense there's an intense magnetic field here, and so there's less fusion taking place at this spot, so it's actually cooler. The temperature drops and it appears black. The other phenomenon that we're going to be looking for are solar prominences, and these are these big ribbon-like structures that kind of come off of the sun and kind of form loops like that back down onto the sun, like that. Sometimes they can be connected by sunspots. They don't have to be, but it can occur. And essentially what this is, is a big magnetic field line from the fusion process this that are going on inside the sun. And some of the plasma kind of jets out, forms like an arc above the solar atmosphere. Another phenomena that we're gonna see are solar flares. Now, these are kind of tricky to see because these only happen once in a while. But essentially what happens is that when you have the sun, right, and you have your solar prominence, the solar prominence starts to overlap with itself. It goes really far out into the sun's atmosphere. You can have double, triple loops, but at this point right here, it kind of cuts off the plasma and there's a big release of energy. And in that second, you're gonna get a big blast of, uh, of light and energy. So you may see that. Another one that you're gonna see, or another uh, solar feature that we're gonna talk about are coronal mass ejections, all right? And that is basically a really huge solar flare. If you looked at the sun in profile, it's kinda of out like that, you would see a massive release of energy above the sun in one specific spot. And then the last piece of, uh, or the last object that we're gonna be looking for on the sun are coronal holes. And if you draw the sun again like that, basically you're gonna have really large dark spots that cover specific portions of the sun. And this is caused by the magnetic field of the sun kind of coming up and going in and um, there's just like a sun, they're like basically giant sunspots. There's less fusion here, so they appear darker too. 
All right, so this is all great, but how are we actually gonna analyze these spots? Well, there is a website that I'm gonna put online. It's called thesuntoday.org. And they have actual solar data or data of the sun over 24 hour periods. You'll see the sun rotate. And what you wanna do when the sun's going around over 24 hours, you wanna pick a different um, object, like let's say a sunspot, right? And we wanna track how far it goes or how quickly it travels across the sun. Now keep in mind, this is just an estimate. Um, we're assuming that the sun is flat when really the sun is round, kind of like this. And that sunspot is traveling like that. Um, but we're assuming it's going straight across. But we'll get a number that's close to the actual rotational velocity of the sun. All right, so you want to look for those objects that I just mentioned previously. And what you're going to do is to set up first your on your computer screen. So let's say this is your computer screen. I might need a new marker. All right, and you have the sun in the middle. Okay. You want to measure the distance across the sun on your computer screen, all right, and put it in meters. On my laptop, it was about 13 centimeters, all right. Then you want to take the average radius of the sun, all right, or the radius of the sun, so the solar radius, and divide it by this distance in meters, 13 centimeters to meters is 0 0.13 meters. All right, whatever that number is, that's gonna be how many solar units, all right, are on your screen. Now, what you wanna do is once you have that number, you wanna pick your object. So let's erase this and start over. So you have the sun again. All right, so you have your sun. You want to pick, say, a sunspot right here, okay? And you want to track or measure how much it moves across in two days, okay? And you want to put two days in seconds. Oops. Which is, I believe, 172,800 seconds. And essentially, you want to take that unit that you got from before by dividing the radius of the sun by the radius or the diameter of the sun by the diameter of your the sun on your monitor, and multiply it by the distance that it actually traveled. So when I did mine, it was by two centimeters, so 0 0.02 meters, and you're going to get a new number, which is going to be the actual distance on the sun that it traveled. So some very large number in meters, probably, I don't know, let's just say a million meters. Okay? Then to get the velocity, we just wanna divide how long it took, or this distance by how long it took to go that distance, which in this case, all the videos are over two days, so we're just gonna divide by that. Okay, and we're gonna get some number in meters per second when I did mine, I got about 1,200 meters per second. And like I said, it's a rough estimate. So for instance, I'm gonna switch up my markers right here. I got 1,200 meters per second for my object. I picked a sunspot. The actual rotational velocity of the sun around the equator is around 1,900 meters per second. So it's not exact, but uh, it's close enough. Now, you might be wondering, well, the diameter of the sun is different at the equator than it is up here, up here, and so on. Most of the phenomenon, based on the data on the sun today, the website I was talking about, is around the equator. So you can basically use the diameter of the sun at the equator um, for most of your values. If you find you want to use an object, you find a really interesting object on the suntoday.com, uh, or .org that you like and it's at a higher latitude, all you have to do is, 
let's say you find a sunspot that you think is really cool, but it's up here, like I was showing you before. All right. The equator of the sun, or the diameter of the sun is there. So what we're going to do, and this is on the surface, the sun is on the surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make a triangle between the center of the sun and that spot on the sun. Now I'm going to pull this out and put it over here. So we have our, our sunspot, we have our distance to the center of the sun, which is still the radius of the sun. We have that distance down there, and this distance here will be the radius of that object to the center. All right, And to get the diameter, you're just going to double that. But first, how you find it is you want to take this angle. Now, this is going to be some guesswork in here. You'll have to do maybe... It doesn't have to be precise, but maybe 25 degrees, 35 degrees, 45 degrees, somewhere in there like that. And essentially what you want to do is use your cosine relation, which is x over r, all right? If we guesstimate that it's around 35 degrees, like I said, you'll have to use your best judgment depending on where it is on the sun. If it's down here, you're going to use 25. If it's closer to up there, you're going to use 45. The cosine of 35 is equal to x, the distance we want to find, over the radius, which is just the radius of the sun. That you can find on Google. Just Google radius of the sun. You'll be fine. Multiply by the radius. All right, you'll get r cosine 35 is equal to x. That's the distance that you're going to use for your radius of the actual sun. So if you were to do this, going back, what you would have to do is once you get your radius, that value x, all right, the diameter is going to be 2x, all right, for the whole distance because you're only calculating for this, so you want to double it by 2, all right, that's the actual value of the sun, so that's the sun's r at, say, 35 degrees latitude, all right, then you want to go back and measure it on the computer, it'll probably be less, maybe, I don't know, eight centimeters, do the same process that we talked about before over again, and you should be good. Now for this lab, I want you to identify three different objects, all right? Basically because solar prominences are kind of hard to see, um, solar flares are too, uh, you're gonna basically be using sunspots and coronal holes um, for this lab but there are a lot of images with solar prominences in them. Um, you're gonna notice when you get to the website that a lot of the, the sun is different colors. It's like bright blue, bright, bright green, bright, bright purple, Ugh, tongue twister. Um, that is, not, it's not the actual color, it's superimposed. Um, all of those, all that data is taken in the ultraviolet spectrum. So they just colored the sun sun color so you can see the detail. Um, so don't worry about that. Just look at the videos and actually look for the phenomenon, okay? You want to identify three different phenomena, um, answer some questions in the assessment, and do the calculations uh, that we went over here, okay? All right, so as always, you can email me if you have any questions, and good luck, guys.